obviously is a, a slight invariant uh, on the Balmoral would be a different wing sometimes. Uh, the wing is up to sell. But anyway, to tie this variant to the Balmoral, and it's a D fly. The hook I'm using is a size 1. Thread, just use a black thread. Uh, wound it down so far. Now I'm going to run the thread until I'm in line with the point of the hook. Now the sizes I like to tie, normally for this, round about size 1s, 2s and 3s. And then, then you go as small as you like. But in the bigger flies for the early season, uh, this is the kind of the bigger size. Now, tag is just a oval silver tinsel. They catch this on the side. Now I'm in line with the point of the hook there, and I'm going to take the thread down until not exactly at in line with the the barb, but just before the barb, not too far. And then bring the thread back up. Try and keep that as neat as you can. Bring it back up until we're in line with the point of the hook. Now to make it last, what I like to do is put a wee bit of varnish or super glue in this case. Just put that on, that gives it the grip and the strength. And then you've got nice turns, tight straight turns all the way up. Make sure they're touching. Nice and tight. That point there. There's a good few turns in, make sure it's nice and strong. Now what I like to do is I like to make sure this tie is just tied on. So come up a wee bit. Now I'm going to trim it full length of the body. Or to basically, with these hooks you've obviously the eyes formed by bending, the wire's bent. And I'm bringing it up to that cut end of the piece of wire so that then it fills it. I mean what you can do for speed, I mean what times I do is just take it up, wide turns. And then come back down. Because you're going, this body is going to be a dub body and you're not going to see it. And that's your basically, your tag done nice and tight. Tail. I'm just going to use some golden pheasant crest. Just using a large feather. And tail length. Now, some people like them quite well, short, whatever. I mean, I like a nice balance. It's just an eye, it's something you like to see yourself. Now, obviously just buy the hook. Uh, maybe one and a half, just buy the bend. So if you're looking at the bend length, and then you tie this on the top. Now I'm just basically positioning the tail with a couple of turns to get it to sit the way I want. And your length that you want, you can pull it in. Now this is a fishing fly, so it doesn't have to be well, it has to be perfect to your eye, but it's not for show, it's for fishing. And again, you could cut this a full length of the body so it's balanced, once you're happy. Now, part of the tail, so we obviously get golden pheasant crest. You've got the tippet now. Just pull away the fibers either side. Now, I'm looking for a good, good colour and thickness in the tip. So I'm holding the tip of the feather here, come in with the points of the scissors and trim that away. Looking at half the length of the tail at least. Just set it on the top. Two or three turns again, just to make sure you've got it right. That's fine. And again you can quickly run the thread up and back down. It's not going to change, it just takes it out of the way. It's making sure it's tied in. If it was a smooth body you want it, you wouldn't be doing that, you'd be keeping it as smooth as you can. Because it's a dub body you can get away with that. Now I've got the oval tinsel again. On the way down I'm going to catch this in. I'm keeping it on my side. But to the, and then as I come down near the bottom here, I'm just going to take it to slightly under. Right up against the tail. Now, it's a double rib on this, so I've got the wide silver tinsel. This is embossed tinsel. This one's by Lagerton, this one here. 
So it's uh, just the embossed tinsel and the large in this case. Cut into a point. So basically when I start to wind this up, I want the cut end towards the back when I start winding. So just catch that on the side in front of the tinsel. Uh, the oval tinsel, sorry. Just make sure it's tied in. Now we're ready for our, our body. Now I'm going to be using, I'll show you here. So you can see that. It says Pig's Wool in blue and green Highlander. Now I bought this many moons ago. Uh, you can get it. What it is is boar bristle. This is the under fur. There's plenty of boar bristle out there. Anyone that sells it, uh, obviously, and dyes it, they'll have this dubbing. But you don't have to use it. I mean, just use your normal dubbing if you haven't got it. Now, for the bigger flies, it works really well. I mean, even smaller flies. Now, it's quite coarse. Now, what you'll come like, you'll see, like, there's a piece there. There's actually bits of blue bristle still in it. You've got to pull them out. Now, you'll see how well it dubs. I mean, when it's coarse, when you dub it onto your thread. But when you wind it onto the body, you can get it nice and tight. It's really good stuff. As you can yes. see, I've got it, slid it up. Now, I've got an anchor point, meaning the start and the off there. Now, I can add... Tease it out to suit, as you can see, and turn, form a nice shape to suit yourself. That's, how it's so good. That's why it's so good, and you get some really good depth in the colour. Now you take this about halfway up. That's fine, and take away the excess. Now at this point, what I'm going to do is tie in. This is blue eared pheasant dyed black. Any kind of spay hackle that you can find. Now I'm going to tie it in by the tip. So just catch in with the tip. Take this down, you can fold back. Trim away. The tip of the actual feather. And then get the blue dubbing. There we are, there's the blue. Again, make sure you just have the dub in and not you don't want any of the bristle. This is a nice dark blue. Again, you just dub it on. Get it started. I mean this this the pig's bristle or the pig's wool, sorry. Pig's wool was used a lot in classic style of salmon flies. And uh, you, I can see why, because it, it's really good. So see, if you do come across it, it's worth, worth buying it if you're tying this type of fly. But if you don't, then you just use your SLF or seals fur or whatever you have. Just making sure I don't catch my hackle. And I'm building up the body, just slightly going back here, because uh, I wanted to tape it up. Moist my fingers here because that's really going in the way. Nice and tight. Get some more of the dubbing. Because they're bigger flies, they take a lot longer to actually tie a lot more building up. The proportions are. Uh, Again, it's just to make sure that you get a nice taper in the body. Got one of these fibers, there we go. Again, just tighten up as you go. And wind up. Just check the shape. That's fine. First rib up is a large, wide embossed tinsel. You're looking for about five turns, so you basically spread them right out. Cross your thread nice and tight. Now, as a fishing fly, I prefer usually to bring the the hackle up towards myself and across the rib. Drawing back these fibres, so when I bring the the oval tinsel up, 
it actually catches or counter ribs the hackle and holds it. And that's the strongest way to do it. So you try and get as much of the, f the hackle out, much of the fibres and as many turns as you can get. Nice and tight, make sure you've caught it down. Trim that away. Just gonna make sure it's well caught in before I go any further. Just pull your hackle fibers out. Just making sure if you do this, then you can bring the rib up through. Now the rib just take the rib onto the tinsel. Right at the back edge, just take it up. Try and ignore the fibres. Just wind it up, it'll be fine. To get to the top. And that's what's holding your hackle on, protecting it. Nice and tight. And then trim away. There we are. Not sure your hackle. Now, like if you look here, see how we're kind of short with the hackle length and times you get that with these. What I like to do is sometimes get a large hen hackle high. So uh, this is a saddle, dyed black, the same, always the same colour. And I just build, I fill that just slightly with the hackle. So I tie in the hen hackle by the tip. Especially in the bigger sizes, you need to do this just to make up for it. And then trim that away, or break it away as I did there. And then just come in with, don't have to go crazy, two or three turns. Yeah, okay, cross your thread, make sure you tie it in nice and tight. Trim away the excess. And then tidy the head area up. As you see, it just finishes that off a wee bit better. You can, it fills it up. Then I'm going to tie in teal hackle, a large teal. Use guard well, you could use widgeon, whatever you have. Again, I'm going to tie this in by the tip. two or three turns down, fold it back, nice and tight, trim that away, and then we can, look and probably, depends on how good the, the hackles are, uh, anything two to three turns, now that's me, actually it's plenty, just come back up, I'll catch it with the thread, just follow the stem up, and then open the stem out, put a 9 degree bend into, bend into it, and then come through it with the thread turns, making sure you tie it in. Trim away the waist, tidy up that area, really nice and tight. See how it sits. Now I'm getting ready to tie the wing. Uh, we've got some turkey tail feathers here, some really nice ones, and uh, basically taking the right and the left side, take the slip from either side, just use your scissors to bring it out. Now, just come in, trim away what you need, from that side, and then from this side. Almost the Try and get in the same same width. Now try and not be too fussy with these. Now what I do is just line up the ends and then basically you can t some like to turn them so they're twisting away so they're basically upside down and uh, you tie them so that the, this encourages the curve to come away from the hook. Now, get your length, 
I'm looking for the tips of the feathers to reach the point of the, the tail. Now, at this pace that I like to mark, I like to mark the, the, the feather with two or three turns and then go back. Then I know exactly where they go. Then I, can, I feel I can position them better. See how I've marked them there. Two wee grooves there. So I then look at the feather, make sure they're okay. And uh, I find they sit better if you do that. Now there, you can you can mess about with these a wee bit. So there's your length. Just unfold them down to the sides of the, the hook as close as I can. Come round and it's just a loose two or three turns. And then you can position the wing. You see how easy it sits. Don't force it. Now it's slight, as you can see it's slightly high. Now what I can do is then come on the top and then encourage them to sit the way I want, so sort of slightly lower. So you can move these around because because it's only slack turns, then you can tighten up once you're happy. It will not move. Look at position, look at the length. And see how they're sitting now. So you got that nice shape. And once you're happy, you can trim away. I'll make sure they're tight first before you start moving them around. I'll just then I can zigzag, make sure that the thread turns the grip grip. And then come in. Get the scissors, make sure. Nice and tight, nice and neat cut. And take the thread turns into this. As I say, this is a fishing fly, so. And then get two jungle cock eyes. Now, in this cape, you can see, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one from one this side and one from that side. And what happens is you get this natural curve in the feathers. And you'll see here, look, see how they're curving away. And you you drop them in from the top, you drop them in from basically into the drop jungle cock eyes. I mean, the first thing you do is get the length that you want. So line both of them up, look at the length you want to come in, to there. So basically then make a space, and that will give me the measure for both. And as I say, you want them curving away from one another. And as I come in from the top, then I bring them round so they're facing the right way. Again, you come in with two or three turns, just reasonably loose. Position the jungle cock, get it to sit the way you want. Get them to sit right. And then you can tighten up. Now I like hackle fibres to be tied in, so don't worry whether there's bits of fluff here. Because I want to fold these back once I've got two or three turns down. And again, I can just draw these back. Nice and tight. And then... If your thread's going to slip on you, just do a zigzag through. I'll not slip, um, this is a uni thread, and it's a round thread, and it's got plenty of grip. And then I can come in here and I can basically break these off. See how it's sitting. See how things are lined. Looks okay. Then I can put finish. Tidy the head area up. At the same time, trim away your thread. Now what I like to do is come in with some super glue first, and then varnish all the way around. Super glue dries really hard, sets the head, so it's not going to move on you. So allow that to dry. We here there, so I'm just going to flatten it. Now, once the super glue is dry, then I put on a a coat of varnish, a couple of coats anyway. Allow that to dry, and then you should have a really nice shiny head. And that's basically. 
the Balmoral are a variant of the Balmoral. It's a D-style um, fly. Do you like to tie them? Now you can tie them, I've got one here to show you. On the body itself, you can actually tie the hackle. Just at the front, at the top, just a normal hackle. And uh, it's still a nice fly at that, instead of all the way up. So if you have issues with uh, that body hackle, then that's the way to do it. And uh, in the smaller sizes especially, that works. Anyway, you can see it's a beautiful fly. Lovely colour combination. It certainly works well. So I hope you enjoyed that. Mm -hmm.